Early in the third quarter, Arkansas's defense comes up with another big play. Richard Richardson makes the hit, and Jeff Goff comes up with a fumble recovery. Inspired by the defensive work of its teammates, Arkansas's offense opens up. Kevin Scanlon sets up a touchdown with a pass to Darrell Mason. It's Mason again on the receiving end as the Hogs take the lead. Jim Elliott stops a Texas drive with this tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Moments later, Ishor Donas makes it 17-7 with his 15th consecutive field goal, an NCAA record. The Razorbacks spend the rest of the afternoon staving off Texas rallies. The Hog defense proves up to the task with plays like these by Billy Ray Smith, and also Jeff Goff. Arkansas fans celebrate a 17 to 14 victory over the Longhorns but the Razorbacks don't have time to rejoice only a week later the Hogs face Houston in another Southwest Conference battle of the unbeatens. Gary Anderson gets Arkansas off to a good start with a 46 yard sprint that sets up a field goal. After Houston marches the length of the field, the Cougars are stopped when Trent Bryant recovers an errant pitch. Arkansas's defense is outstanding all day long. Here, Kevin Evans saves a possible touchdown with this deflection. Trailing 7-3, Arkansas marches to a score. Kevin Scanlon hits Steve Clyde for 11 yards. Then Scanlon runs 23 yards himself. On the next play, Scanlon gets the touchdown with this 11-yard blast. Jim Howard and company make the big plays on defense. Jeff Goff will recover a big fumble. While plays like this one from Scanlon to Bobby Duckworth keep the Hogs moving at times, Arkansas finds itself behind 13 to 10 with less than a minute to go. On third and ten, Scanlon teams with Gary Anderson for 11 yards. Then Scanlon finds Gary Stiggers open for a 14-yard gain. This pass from Scanlon to Robert Farrell with four seconds left gives the Hogs a last chance. However, Ashore Donis, who has hit an NCAA record 16 straight field goals, has this one blocked as the gun sounds and the Hogs suffer a 13 to 10 defeat. A week later, the Razorbacks rebound against Rice. Kevin Scanlon has a near flawless performance, hitting Robert Farrell for big gains and taking this one seven yards for a touchdown. Rice, meanwhile, has trouble coping with Arkansas's defense, as well as plays like this one from Scanlon to Gary Anderson. And this one to James Talbert for a touchdown. Arkansas's defense contains Earl Cooper in the second half and comes up with big plays like this interception by Randy Wessinger.
Freshman Darrell Bowles leads the Hogs in rushing, making plays like this 30 yard run. Scanlon wraps up the 34 7 win with his 35 yard scoring toss to Gary Stickers. Homecoming against Baylor proves no easy task. Despite this kickoff return by Gary Anderson, the Hogs trail 14 0 at halftime. The Razorbacks find themselves in a 17 0 third quarter hole when Roland Sales puts some life into the Arkansas offense. Kevin Scanlon hits Robert Farrell to keep the march alive. And then on fourth and five, Scanlon finds Bobby Duckworth open for a 32 yard touchdown. From there, the Porker defense takes over. Randy Wessinger sets up a field goal with this interception. And then moments later, Mike Massey makes another theft. Still, the Hogs trail 17 9 when Jeff Goff attacks from the rear. He causes a fumble into the Baylor end zone, and Danny Phillips sets off a wild celebration with his recovery for a touchdown. Robert Farrell then makes a sensational catch of a Kevin Scanlon pass to even things at 17 apiece. Jim Howard gives Baylor's offense a jolt. And then the teams trade field goals before the Hogs face second and six on their own 40 with less than four minutes left. Behind blocks by Darrell Bowles and Greg Kalenda, Kevin Scanlon finds time to throw. Robert Farrell is open behind the Bear defense, and the Razorbacks score the winning touchdown. Arkansas's defense provides insurance against a Baylor comeback. Alfred Mohammed causes one loss, and Jim Elliott causes another. Finally, Baylor's quarterback has no place to go, and the Hogs win 29 to 20. With Arkansas playing for a spot in either the Cotton or the Sugar Bowl, the Hogs take on Texas A&M in another key matchup. Darrell Bowles runs 57 yards on this play en route to a 169 yard afternoon. Arkansas's defense shuts off the Aggies. Johnny Hector runs into trouble on this play. And Kim Dameron limits this play to a yard gain. Billy Ray Smith finds a way to neutralize Mike Mosley's speed. Gary Anderson proves nearly as explosive as Bowles in the game and breaks 16 yards to set up a field goal. Kevin Evans then gives Arkansas excellent field position with this interception. Darrell Bowles explodes for 20 yards to set up this field goal by Ishor Donitz. Arkansas continues its march to a league championship as Teddy Morris seals the 22-10 triumph with this interception. It's the final night of the season and the Razorbacks don't know whether they're headed for New Orleans or Dallas but they know they can clinch a share of the league championship with a victory over SMU. Even Lou Holtz is smiling as the Hogs get off to a great start. 
Richard Richardson jars the ball loose and Jeff Goff makes the recovery. On Arkansas's next offensive play, Kevin Scanlon hits Gary Anderson for 14 yards. Two plays later, Scanlon strikes again, finding Steve Clyde for the touchdown. Arkansas's kicking game has played a key role in the Razorbacks' 1979 success. Here is Steve Cox punts. Steve Douglas and Ed Jackson hit, and Jackson recovers to set up another Porker score. Kevin Scanlon finds Bobby Duckworth open for 18 yards, and moments later, Ishor Donna's 18th field goal of the year gives Arkansas a 10 to nothing lead. Scanlon, named the league's offensive player of the year, keeps another march going with an 18 yard completion to Darrell Mason. And then Scanlon hits Mason again at the five yard line. It sets up a short scoring toss to Gary Anderson. Kevin Evans, an all Southwest Conference defender, keeps the pressure on SMU with this interception. Quickly, the Hogs are on the move again. Kevin Scanlon shocks the Mustangs with a 45 yard run. Then Scanlon hits Steve Clyde for the touchdown. With plays like this from Richard Richardson, Billy Ray Smith, and Jim Howard, SMU has nowhere to go. Arkansas is still going, though. Darrell Bowles dashes 31 yards to set up yet another touchdown. Kevin Scanlon gets the Hogs close. His pass hits Richard Farr, then deflects to Darrell Mason, who reaches the Mustang one-yard line. Scanlon gets the final touchdown himself. Plays like this interception coming up by Kevin Evans. This 18 yard run by Roland Sales will ice Arkansas's 31 to 7 victory. It's been a great year for Coach Lou Holtz and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Holtz is named the league's coach of the year, and Hog seniors play their finest football. Arkansas shares the conference championship, and a late season loss by Texas sends the Razorbacks into the Sugar Bowl. The Southwest Conference football season kicked off the 80s in typical Wild West fashion. Unparalleled competition characterized the renewal of rivalries dating back more than half a century. All nine Southwest Conference teams intensely drove toward a common goal, a coveted berth in the Cotton Bowl. Preseason polls were thrown out the window as upsets became the rule. The sideline excitement and pageantry alone were well worth the price of admission. For the fifth straight year, turnstiles spun at a record rate as more than two million fans came out to cheer their teams on. Dark 
course, Baylor took the championship crown with a margin of three games, a feat only accomplished once before in conference history. Five conference records tied or broken. Five postseason bowl invitations won by conference teams. There was week-by-week -week excitement, not to be found anyplace else in the country. During a year when the only certainty was the fine quality of play, over 500 young men eagerly engaged in powerful, heart-stopping action. Southwest Conference style. Texas in 1979 co-champion Arkansas moved the inaugural game up to Labor Day before 70,000 fans in Austin's Memorial Stadium and a nationwide television audience. Texas had plenty to cheer about as the offense gained over 160 first quarter yards. But Arkansas rose to the occasion holding the high-powered Longhorn scoreless for the quarter. The Razorbacks regrouped their offense and found the missing piece to the puzzle by springing sophomore running back Gary Anderson. Excitement gripped the sidelines as payment for early summer labors was credited on the scoreboard. But all wasn't over so fast as the pigskin turned Longhorn. Texas A.J. Jam Jones pranced in for the score, and for the next 25 minutes, the Horns took total control, scoring 20 points while yielding only a field goal. the Razorbacks launched a comeback and cut the deficit to six. But time ran out, and Texas took the earliest season opener in conference history, 23 to 17. The other 1979 co-champion, Houston Cougars, opened their title defense against a surprisingly strong Baylor Bears club. Cougar coach Bill Yeoman and Baylor coach Grant Taft both had the same question. How good were those Bears? After spotting the Cougars a pair of field goals, the Bears went on an 85-yard, seven-play scoring drive. Quarterback Jay Jeffries was the key, accounting for 68 yards, including the final play in the drive, a scoring toss deep in the end zone. in Waco were convinced there was something special about the green and gold this season. Things just seemed to break their way. Opportunities were seized and made to pay off. Cougars emerged from their den long enough to cut Baylor's lead to five. However, when the Cougars made a bid for the lead, Baylor's defense gave an answer not to be misunderstood. Then it was the conference's number one rusher, Walter Abercrombie, and freshman Alfred Anderson icing the Baylor victory 24 to 12. The music played at Southern Methodist University had a familiar melody in 1980, winning. 
SMU's 8-3 posting and second place Southwest Conference finish were its best season and conference records since 1966. 1980 also brought a top 20 ranking and a trip to the Holiday Bowl. Coach Ron Meyer assembled a team that included seven all-conference selections and one consensus All-American. John Simmons. The senior defensive back returned two punts for TDs, picked off seven passes, and scored 24 points out of his secondary position. Freshman Lance McElhaney guided the tailback-oriented offense that averaged over 350 yards per game. Splitting tailback duties, Eric Dickerson and all-conference selection Craig James delivered performances that brought back memories of the Doak Walker days. offense combined with a tenacious defense to produce a Mustang sweep of Texas, Arkansas, and Texas A&M for the first time in four decades. SMU's impressive showing in 1980 served notice that Mustang mania is alive and well in the Southwest Conference. In newly renovated Kyle Field, Coach Tom Wilson contemplated the fortunes of Texas A&M's youngest team in years. Senior signal caller Mike Mosley was expected to be the solidifying ingredient, but his senior year would be hampered by nagging injuries. Backup David Beal stepped in to lead A&M through one of the toughest schedules in the country, a schedule that included seven teams headed to postseason games. The major weapon in the Aggie arsenal was sophomore halfback Johnny Hector, accounting for nearly a thousand yards in total offense. Number 32 kept excitement high in College Station. were forced to pay the price as the always begrudging defense made its presence felt. A solid defensive effort enabled A&M to defeat Texas 24 to 14 and brought the Aggie season to an end on a bright note. Jinx 1980 was a rough year for AM followers, but experience gathered by young players forced into service, and the return of Hector's long strides could bring big dividends in the future. responsibility is it to see that on game day the team's 195 pound quarterback and 265 pound defensive tackle are fit for duty in this violent collision sport that burden lies with the team trainer whether it's added reinforcement during the heat of battle or treatment of game injuries Southwest Conference trainers are a dedicated breed like Cash Birdwell head trainer at SMU I feel like the trainers in the Southwest Conference are a close group. There's a camaraderie that uh, 
I don't think most conferences have just strictly because we share ideas and I, and I always have a feeling that if someone at another school has an idea or comes up with something, uh, the rest of us have always found out about it. This pooling of knowledge along with the use of highly sophisticated equipment greatly aids the diagnosis and treatment of injuries. Additionally, this enables the trainer to identify and correct possible weaknesses. They have the stationary bike that we can actually have them ride a bike. Uh, under so many pounds of pressure. We have a jogging apparatus where they actually jog and it's up off the ground where they never suffer the traumatic shock of hitting the ground. We have two pieces of equipment that are used strictly in the shoulder and neck area to develop the strength uh, to the injured shoulders or neck. You're gonna have leg, ankle, knee injuries, so you have what we call knee extension and hamstring curl machines. So much can be put into this area and is needed in this area and I know all the schools have gotten into this uh, quite extensively in the last five to ten years. Just not testing to prevent, but being prepared to rehabilitate once they are injured. And then there's the never-ending job of taping. It begins the first day of spring practice and continues until the final game whistle in December. Seven miles of tape per day. Even more on game day, readies the team for contact. We not only uh, just put tape on them, there are a lot of new ideas coming into play, protective and preventive equipment. One of those that we have really been enthusiastic about is, is a uh, protective brace for the knee joint that, that we do put on the outside of the, of the leg. We're trying to get as many people to wear it as possible. And uh, we feel like with this applied to the outside of the knee joint, uh, if the blow is taken along the joint line, the brace will absorb the shock and it won't be transmitted into the cartilage or ligament area. And uh, this is just a, another form of preventing the athlete from being injured and, and keep them in the sport. Plus, if we can prevent them from ever being injured, nationally they'll leave school healthy. And I think this is utmost in all the trainers' mind in the conferences. With the motto, prevention is protection, there's one thing for certain. Southwest Conference athletes are exposed to the very best that modern sports medicine can offer. Despite TCU's record, there was a lot to cheer about in Fort Worth. Coach F.A. Dry had opponents doing double takes, wondering how the Horn Frogs could be a 1 in 10 team. Five times victory was stolen from the Frogs in the final two minutes. However, their come from behind victory over Tech showed what kind of backbone they possessed. Hard work and determination were the team's hallmarks. Steve Stamp, hero of the Frog comeback victory, led the conference in total offense and tied a Southwest Conference mark with four touchdown passes against Texas. All conference selections, Stanley Washington, number seven, and leading conference receiver Sammy Stewart were the main TCU targets on the only conference team to average over 200 yards per game through the air. Linebacker Daryl Patterson spearheaded an enthusiastic bunch on defense, which took pride in leading the league against the pass. Take that determination and enthusiasm and add to it frog fever, and next season looks promising indeed. For the fourth year in a row, Arkansas under coach Lou Holtz registered winning records for both conference and total season. For the 18th time in their history, the Razorbacks went to a bowl game, winning the Hall of Fame Bowl 34 to 15. While the Hogs were proficient on offense, their defense was particularly outstanding. Three players made the all-conference team. Nose guard Richard Richardson, defensive tackle Billy Ray Smith, and quarterback Kevin Evans. Sophomore quarterback Tom Jones finished second in